phone, my old phone was on the fritz. The sound was coming in and out, louder, softer. Sorry about that, the last couple of videos. So here we go. Another thing on sound, another video on sound. And I saw this thing on Facebook about what do you do when a student doesn't have it in their sound. We listen to a ton of people here, uh, over, especially over the years. And many with evolving sounds or they come here because they're looking for a solution to a problem. Never, nobody ever says that they're looking for a solution to a problem. But if you're here, you probably are. Um, whether it be high range, low range, middle range, uh, texture of sound, clarity of articulation. There's a lot of things that go into this. Um, uh, one of the biggest things I hear is the sound getting trapped in the throat of the bell. When a person plays, um, doesn't matter if it's trumpet or trombone. And it can come from practicing in too small of a room. I always ask that question. Uh, are you practicing in a hall or in a big classroom? Or what's your environment that you're actually practicing in because that can influence your sound to a big degree. I think it's very important to be able to resonate correctly in a big environment because that's where you perform. Um, in a hall, either if you're in a big band, if you're playing in a, um, a hall, you might be mic'd, but to get the energy in a big band, you, you've got to play louder. And the sound has to get out of the bell and develop and radiate, not just be this. If it's too directional, it's gonna do this there. It's not ideal, that's not it um, to have. And so I started thinking about qualifying it. And I can say honestly that the best musicians that I've worked with are always studying their sound. They're getting feedback from the audience, people they respect, their peers next to them. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to uh, people that perform with Dave Taylor, and they're like, man, that guy's crazy. He's always asking me, what do you think about this or that or this? And Dave calls me, and he'll say, hey, I'm, I tried this mouthpiece last night. It worked great for this, but I think I need to. And he's always studying his sound and what he's after and how other people perceive it, which is probably more important. And I, that was one of my comments on Facebooks is that you need a sound that people are willing to pay money for unless you don't want a paycheck. You're independently wealthy, which I'm not. <clears throat> Why not? Different subject. So I would consider that if you want to have a living playing music, you need to have something people are willing to pay for. And you have to figure out here what's going on. You have to figure out here what's going on or here, technique-wise, I'm talking about. I, I don't think the world has a place for missed notes anymore. Um, I, th I think the level is so high that you, you've got to mechanically know your business first, and then delve into the sonics. How are you gonna resonate completely through your body? I, I guarantee you, it's not through tension and bearing down. It's not, it's not through Cornish firm doesn't equate to aperture being firmer, you know, but that, cause that's going to give you a tight sound too. Um, getting the sound out, well, blow through the instrument. Okay, great. So you set up an instrument to blow through and then you can't play quiet cause there's not enough compression. It, it's, this is a very complex thing that I think, uh, the best musicians are constantly, uh, working with us, um, to achieve their product and as a student, and you don't want to be a student, you want to be a professional. You have to evolve past this point of being a student. And studying with professionals and, and qualified musicians is the best way to hear, but then you have to record that and then go into your practice room and record it again and emulate it until you can get a sound that people are w willing to pay for. Getting the sound out of the horn and resonating completely in the softs and getting the sound out of the, the, the throat of the bell into the room, radiating in a nice, pleasant way with nice, pleasant overtone structure. Um, there are tools that you can use to, to study this as well. If you're interested in that, you can um, <laughs> very basically, even when I was in college, I used to get a 12 strobe tuner and I'd, I'd play a fundamental B flat, but then I was looking at F. 
uh, an octave and uh, obviously a fifth above that. And I would look and see if I'm rolling sharp or rolling flat. And I would try and get my overtones to where they line up because the more in tune your overtone structures can be, um, the more complete your sound is going to be uh, heard as. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we're looking forward to 2000. We are looking forward to 2019. And I um, hope you enjoy this video. Uh, the Trombone Festival coming up in Thailand, um, I believe, on the uh, um, next month. So if anybody's over there, uh, hope you enjoy the show. Send us some uh, pictures so we can know how it went. Hope all is well. Have a great holiday season. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that stuff.